Hey friends, how's it going? I hope you're having a great day. Uh, welcome back to the channel. So a ton of you have told me that you finally got around to getting your Steam decks, which is absolutely sick. So I thought I'd make a quick video today just talking about some of my favorite tips and features that I've learned about the deck in the last couple of months. Um, so let's get steamy. So this may be an obvious one, but I feel like it's worth expanding upon. Sleep mode and quick resume are just great. So let's say you're playing a game and you want to take a quick break, um, or more realistically like, your child has thrown up all over themselves, um, you can just hit the power button on top, which will send your Steam Deck into sleep mode, which effectively keeps the game paused, but brings the power consumption down to next to nothing. So you can go clean up your kid or do whatever it is you need to do, come back, hit that power button, and you can pick up exactly where you left off. Even if you don't come back for hours and hours, or even days and days, depending on what game you're playing. So rather than closing and then booting back up a game every time you want to play it, which does take a couple minutes, uh, you can just click that power button and you're straight back to where you left off. And it makes it way easier to slowly chip away at a game um, when you have little bits of free time. And it makes a really nice alternative to just mindlessly scrolling on your phone. So you can mindlessly play a bit of Minecraft instead. <laughs> this is also really handy in games like Persona where there's a ton of dialogue and lots of space between save points. Obviously you do need to be wary that it will slowly drain battery over time. So if you're going to leave your game for a couple of days it's probably best to plug it in. But to put it into perspective I did a little test yesterday. So I held voice of cards um, over 24 hours on sleep mode and in that time it went from 88% to 79%. So 24 hours, 10%. I know it's not a very demanding game but um, that just goes to show that it can actually hold on for a really long time without losing too much power. Unfortunately you can't download games or updates when it's in sleep mode which is such a bummer. I really really hope they update this. However something they have updated is the playtime counter. The playtime used to tick up on a game when you held it in sleep mode um, but luckily they fixed that now which means I'm gonna have to find a new excuse for some things. <laughs> So using SD cards with Steam Deck is actually really, really good. If you get the right card, there's almost no difference in speed when compared to booting off the internal SSD. I remember when I first saw the news that they were gonna have an SD port in the Steam Deck and I was just like, I'm not gonna use that. I only play my games at high speed, buffer free, 60 FPS, ultra settings, but it turns out you totally can with SD cards. The one I personally recommend for the best speed is the Samsung Evo Select or Plus, I believe. And in my basic tests, I saw literally no difference to load speeds or boot times. And this is particularly useful if you want to save a bit of money and get a lower tier Steam Deck. Just whack a 512 gigabyte SD card in there and you've got a ton of storage and you've saved loads of money. So battery life is a pretty hot topic when it comes to Steam Deck users. So here's a couple tips that I use to extend the battery life a little. First, set the resolution in game from 800 to 720p or lower if you can bear it. And then in the Steam settings, toggle the scaler to FSR and turn FSR sharpness up to full, but this can be dialed down a little bit if you want to extend battery life even more. But for me, living on the higher setting is fine. This can also be used to boost the frame rate in most games. Next, this might be obvious, but set your graphics in game to a mix of like low and medium and high settings, depending on your preference. Uh, for me, medium is just about always fine. Third, turn on VSync in game, and then in the Steam settings, turn on half rate shading. Fourth, Another obvious one, but set your frame rate. For most games, I find between 40 and 45 is totally fine. And if it's a slower paced, like turn-based kind of game, 30 is totally fine too. Fifth, turn off any motion blur or depth of field effects in game. And sixth, turn off Steam Haptics and Rumble. Following these steps, I managed to get another half hour of battery life out of Devil May Cry 5, just for an example. And for me, I don't notice any difference in quality. So I don't feel like I'm missing out on anything. And I just just get a bit of extra battery life. You're gonna still be angry about the battery life, aren't you? Yeah, well, that's it. So within the settings to each game, you can access something called community layouts. This is where players can create 
and upload their own custom controller layouts for the Steam Deck, which you can download and use yourself. This is incredibly handy for all games, but in particular those that aren't like perfectly suited to the Steam Deck. For example, Inscription was a game that was made for PC and requires mouse input, so you have to spend a little bit in the settings just getting the touchpads to work and stuff. But to save time, you can go into the community layouts and pick from a setup that someone else has designed and already worked really well. And the most positive ones float to the top so it's easy to pick a good one. But I would recommend checking out the layouts for every kind of game as people utilize things like these rear buttons in really useful ways. And yeah, it just saves you time assigning all the buttons and figuring out what sort of assigned buttons work best. Do you regret not buying the non-glare Steam Deck? Yeah. Annoyed by fingerprints all over your screen? Yeah. Sick of looking at your ugly, disgusting, greasy double chin every time you want to play a game. All right. Yes, Jesus Christ. Then you need a non-glare screen protector. So I've personally been using this one from Brotect for the last couple months and I'm really into it. It dramatically reduces glare, which for me makes playing games much more immersive. It does compromise image quality just a little bit. Things will look a little bit darker and fuzzier, but to be honest, I personally barely notice a difference. I know this isn't an accessories video, but this was such a big game changer for me and it was only five pounds, so I feel like it's pretty affordable for most people. And in fact, if you pick up one of these and a SD card, you've effectively got the top tier Steam Deck model at a much lower cost. All right, some quick fire tips for you here now. Some of these might be quite obvious, but hopefully they'll be helpful if you didn't know about them. If you hold the Steam button down, you get access to a list of a ton of shortcuts, which makes it way easier to change a load of the options really quickly. Bang! You can install a ton of other game libraries on the Steam Deck, like uh, Epic Games or Origin, super easily. And there's a ton of good guides on how to do this on YouTube. The Steam Deck is an emulator beast. You can install something called EmuDeck and this makes it incredibly easy to download a ton of different emulators, throw your ROMs on there and you've got access to just about every classic game you can think of. There's also some really great guides for this on YouTube, go check them out. Docking your deck is a funny phrase, but it's also absolutely sick when plugged into like a TV or a monitor, as not only do a lot of modern games actually run surprisingly well on Steam Deck, if you're into emulating or playing some older, less intensive games, there's a really good chance that they can run at sort of like 4K 60 and higher. You can use custom icons and backgrounds for your games. Just head onto desktop mode, go to steamgriddb.com, download a background you like for free, Head into Steam while still in desktop mode, select the game you want to change, right click on the background and select your new icons from there. Hmm. Which might actually solve the problem I was having earlier. All right, so that was some features and tips uh, for the Steam Deck. I uh, really hope you found that useful. I'm sorry if some of those were a little bit basic. I wanted to keep things pretty straightforward today. Um, I know there's a ton of stuff you can do uh, that gets a bit more techy, like different boot animations or adjusting like the contrast and the saturation to the screen and stuff. But a lot of those things take a little bit of tinkering uh, and I wanted to keep things quite like simple and straightforward for today. But yeah, hopefully even just one of these things may have helped you out a little bit. I forgot to say, if you thought some of these tips were a bit basic, let me know about some of the tips that you recommend. Let's all just get our tips out in the comments, you know. Let's just slap around our tips a little bit. Thank you so much for joining me here today. I uh, really appreciate you. I hope you have a great rest of your day. I'll catch you really soon. Thanks, guys.